back to Katrina's Creations Knitting Podcast. Uh, if you're brand new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. If you actually are coming back for a second time, thank you so much. Um, it was very exciting over the last week to come home from work and, and look and see the subscribers and how many people have viewed it. And I really appreciate that. Um, I'd like to say a special shout out to the Yarn Shop Girls uh, who subscribed to my channel, and I really appreciate that. Um, as I mentioned in the last week's uh, my first podcast, that was one of the knitting stores that I went to up in Rhode Island. Uh, the knitting shop is called Love to Knit, um, and the girls there are really nice. Uh, it's Anne, Gail, and Marissa. And so thank you very much, and I appreciate it. Um, we're going to get right into the podcast today, and I'm going to tell you who the winner is from our giveaway um, that I was running last week for the stitch markers. Um, we had four entries. And I wrote down everybody's name and I squished them up in little pieces of paper. And then I let my husband do the drawing so it would be totally unbiased. And the winner is Catherine Kirby. And I've already contacted her and she will be getting that shortly. Uh, so, again, I appreciate everybody who entered and all of your ideas of what your favorite uh, weight of yarn is and some of the comments that came back were just really encouraging and I really appreciate that. Um, the The first podcast I did I realized after I did it I talked about my local yarn shop and then proceeded never to tell you the name of it. Um, it's a mental pause type of thing. Uh, the name of my the yarn shop that's closest to me that I go to knitting nights at and I buy a lot of my yarn at is called the Creative View. You like E-W-E, you know, bah, that type of you. Um, so, and it is very, it's a very large store. In fact, um, out of all the shops that I went to up in New England, other than Halcyon Yarns, this is like the biggest yarn shop. So they have lots of stuff. And on that note, remember last week I had talked about, I had bought this yarn called Frolicking Feet. Um, and it is in a pink colorway. It's got different colors in the pink. Um, I wanted to put it with a gray, but I wasn't sure what kind of gray I wanted to get. I found it. Look at how these go look together. How good is that? Uh, this is actually, uh, it's Llama Lace by Queensland. It is so soft. And it is 100 grams, 418 yards. And it is 100% baby llama. It is so soft. It is going to feel so nice alongside this, but the colors, I'm just excited. This is going to be the Bendy Arrows. And the, by the way, the name of that girl uh, that did the pattern for Bendy Arrows is Charlotte Bory. And she also has a podcast, as do the Yarn Shop Girls. They're, they're two of my favorite podcasts. Um, it's called Charlotte and Gus. Gus is her cat. Um, but she has a really nice podcast and she does a lot of knitting designs and bendy arrows is one of them that I want to do with these two. Now, uh, the sweater I was wearing last week was one that I knit and I realized afterwards I never said anything about it. Um, it is an acrylic sweater. I've had it for, I don't know how many years yet at this point. Uh, it's, it's been at least eight years that I've had this sweater and it washes and washes and washes. And because it's a nubby type of yarn, it doesn't show any pilling or anything. And it was, if I remember rightly, it's a Lion's, Lion brand homespun. Um, and it's like in autumn colors. Uh, so anyway, and there was no pattern. I just designed it as I went along. So I will remember to tell you about the shawl I'm wearing today. Uh, it is, let me take it off and show it to you. This is what's called a Faroese shawl. Um, I'm going to back this up a little bit so that you can see a full picture of the shawl. And a Faroese shawl is a design that comes from the Faroe Islands. And the Faroe Islands are a group of islands between Norway and Iceland. And there's definite characteristics with one of these shawls. If you look real close, you'll see a center panel that runs down through the middle. If you can see it right here. A Faroese shawl has a center panel. It also has 
a lace edge and this one I'll move up close so hopefully you can see there you go this came out of a book called the best of knitting I don't know who the author was I have a I have the pattern but it doesn't list an author on it and I don't have the book anymore uh, so I'm not sure who the author was I think it might be Meg Swenson but I'm not sure um, but this was knit years ago uh, from some yarn I got at the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival um, and it is a cotton and it washes up so easy and it's very it's very warm and it's soft and it's it's one that you can throw on real easy. Another thing with Faraway shawls is because they're basically a triangle and a rectangle and a triangle sometimes they even have shoulder shaping in them. This one doesn't but they're designed so that they lay over your shoulder where a triangle triangular shawl doesn't always fall and stay over your shoulder it wants to fall off all the time. This is designed because of that center panel it kind of spreads out the triangles a little bit so they do they do stay on a lot easier. Um, so anyway that's what this is. Now today I thought I would do something different. Um, you can see my spinning wheel slightly over here in the back. It is an Ashford spinning wheel and um, I thought I would show you some of the fiber that I've got. I mean, you saw some of the you saw some fiber I bought last week when I was on our vacation trip. But I thought I would show you some other fiber that I'm thinking I'm not real sure how I'm going to combine it um, or what I'm going to do with it. If it's going to be gradient or if it's going to be variegated or or what. But I thought I, that I would show this to you. I have these six colors first that all came from. Um, a seller on eBay actually her her eBay name is so happy 707 um, I think that she's selling from a shop though because the pictures you could see things hanging on racks in the picture so I'm thinking that maybe she has a yarn or fiber shop someplace um, these are the first three colors and I am putting them together this this one here is called um, seafoam. This of course is pink and this is English Garden and English Garden has these two colors in it and this is this is showing up more blue but it's it's a definite green in the picture. The other three that I'm going to put together and this is from the same buyer are Fiesta, Tomato, and tangerine and tangerine is actually orange not this gold color it's coming through as so those three are going together and I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with them if they're going to I know they're going to be plied but I'm not real sure how I'm going to ply them so if you have any ideas or suggestions of what you would do with them let me know in the comments um, I'm open to any suggestions. Uh, these are 100% um, merino and they are very very soft. I think they're going to spin up really nice. The other yarn that or fiber that I have I got from an Etsy shop. And the Etsy shop is called uh, Moon or Wild Time and it's, I have her label here. Let me show that to you. Uh, there it is. And this is Wild Time Art, wildtime.etsy.com. And she put lavender in here, and it smells so good. It's like I wish I could find a perfume that smelled as good as that, but it's it really smells wonderful. I bought with that. This is um. Oh, uh, let me see. What is this all? Cory cross wool. So it's a Cory Dale and it's a cross with something. Um, I have three different balls. This is kind of a All of these have different tones in the reds. They're not like a solid color. But like this one has some of this color in it. This one has some of this color. They all share some of the same colors. So I think they will blend together. The this I am doing as a gradient. Um, I'm not sure if I'm eventually going to sell it on my Etsy shop or what I'm going to do with it, but I have it in red and I have it in purple. I really like the purples. 
they're a, a little bit different. Um, this is a real, real dark purple. And then you've got a medium purple and the light purple. Um, I really like these. But this is these sets are definitely going to be into gradients going from the light to the dark. Now, as far as works in progress, I am still working on all the same projects I had last week. In fact, I'm reworking on projects I had last week. Um, Mom, if you're looking again, close your eyes. My mother is so funny. She told me on the phone, she watched my podcast. And if you remember last week, I told her to close her eyes, not to look. She assured me that she did close her eyes. And then in the background on the phone, I hear my father going, and I covered them to make sure she didn't peek. Um, I love my parents. They've been married for 56 years and they're like each other's best friend. I've never heard a crossword between the two of them. And they dated since like they were 13, I think, before they got married. And then they've been married for 56 years. Um, anyway, I made, I made my mother's shawl. I was, when I showed it to you last week, I was, it's got four charts in the pattern. I was halfway through the third chart. And I looked at it and it was like, this is not the right length. It's too small. I used the right size needles. I used the right size yarn. I'm not a tight knitter. I don't know what happened, but it was definitely, it would fit one of my young granddaughter, but it was not going to fit my mother. Um, so I ripped the whole thing out and I started over again with a lot bigger needles. This time I am actually knitting this on... What size am I on? I am on six millimeters. And I think before I was on uh, 3.5. So, so I did up it quite a bit. It's looking a lot better than it did. I just finished the second chart. So at this point, it is about a foot long. If I take this back and open it, maybe you could see some of the pattern. It is a top down quilt or top-down shawl, and it gets an edging on it. I don't dare open it up more than this, or it's going to come off the needles. So that's what it looks like. And hopefully I will have it finished this next week. Um, but anyway, that's all I've been working on because I was so frustrated once I had to pull this out and re-knit it again. And then I went on... Um, the lady that owns the yarn shop near me suggested I go into Ravelry and check and see if there was some issues. And it turns out I wasn't the only one that was having problems. I mean, the pattern's very easy. It's a beautiful pattern. But for some reason, I'm not the only one that's having problems with the, the length of it coming up too small. So anyway, it's been redone. It's been fixed. Now, I was going to tell you, uh, last week I talked about Betty Hechtman and the yarn, or the cozy mystery that she writes about crocheting called the Crochet Mysteries. Today I'm going to tell you about the next set of series that she's also written. Um, it's a yarn retreat mystery. The very first one in the series is called Yarn to Go. And the main character um, has like bounced around from job to job to job. And her, her mother, she's like 30 years old, and her mother's like, when are you going to settle down and get married? Because her mother's like a doctor. And, you know, they think she should have her career and her life and everything planned out at this point. And so the character and the main character in the story goes on and she is close friends with her aunt who has a yarn retreat business. And then the aunt dies, which is part of the first mystery in the story is solving how the aunt was killed. But anyway, she ends up taking over her aunt's yarn retreat uh, business. And what the yarn retreat is, is all these these um, total strangers get together and they go to a retreat that's in this town uh, in California and they get together and they, they learn a skill of some problem, you know, uh, some technique with knitting. Uh, like the last book that I read, which is the, the latest one in the series, uh, they were learning how to loom knit, you know, with the big like the round looms and the square looms. They were using that. Um, so the mystery all revolves around yarn retreats. So which which way to yarn retreat around here? That sounds like it could be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, sitting around knitting all day, I could, I could definitely get into that. So that is about all I have for this week. It's short. It's been a shorter uh, podcast. 
I'm hoping that I can throw some editing into this before this actually is uploaded, so we'll see how well it turns out. And I will see you next time. I'm not sure when that is going to be because this next week is extremely busy. Um, but hopefully when I come back, I will have some finished objects. So thanks again, everybody, for turning, uh, tuning in and hope to see you next time. Don't forget to click the subscribe button if you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you again. Thanks again. Bye-bye.